One thing I always like to remind people is that we need to accept that change will happen with or without you. Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm also known as Sarah the Pivoter. In addition to the coaching, I also do yoga and Reiki, and so these are wellness practices that are really nice complementary modalities to support coaching. Oftentimes when we're stuck, right, we're going through something sticky and it feels uncomfortable. And a lot of that has to do with the stories that we tell ourselves in our own minds. And so by moving the body or by moving this energy that's within our body, we're able to get out of our mind and back into our current state, the present, rather than living in the past or the future. We all resist change, even when we want it. But at the same time, what we're working towards is always change, right? When you're working for the promotion, when you're working to save up enough money to buy a house or to go on that trip, you are working towards a change in your life. So if we can start to adopt the mindset of you know, having these milestones, these goals to work towards, but making sure we incorporate little elements of that change already into our present day, then we start to pave that pathway for ourselves. So it's not such a shock to the system when the change occurs, but we also start to become that change before you know, it's actually happened. Because our brains cannot determine the difference between something that has actually happened or something that takes place in the future. This is why people who get stuck in anxiety are living in the future because they're projecting a future emotion, a future state based on the current um, actions, the way that things have been. So it's almost like we're borrowing an emotion from the future rather than living in the present moment. But if we can start to project, we already have that new job. We already are going on that holiday. We are already the person who goes to the gym three times a week. Then we start to make the micro habits and micro steps in our day-to-day -day life that brings us to that goal. One trick that I like to have people do for visualization is to imagine the inevitable. Take a product, let's say it's the iPhone, and imagine how this product would become obsolete. Because when you do this, you're challenging yourself to come up with a solution that's innovative and that could make that product obsolete. If we can start to look at objects in our day-to-day -day life and think, what would it take to make this object not be in my home? Then we might start to move towards training our brain to think differently. The first step to any change is awareness. The second step is going to be figuring out your why. You know, why are you doing things and why do you want them to change? The third step, communicate this change with people in your environment. So not only does it require you to have consistent daily habits, but it requires a system that will support this change. So communicating what change you're aiming for to your friends, your partner, your colleagues will be critical to long lasting success. So in the process of communicating the change that you're working towards to people around you, I think the biggest thing is to be kind and to also be curious. And what I mean by that is Adopt a lens of curiosity if someone that you communicate to about your change does not give you positive feedback. Because maybe they don't understand the change in the way that you intended them to understand it. Or maybe this change affects them and they're not really thinking about you in their reaction, right? So don't let the external out, you know, outside influence affect your decision to change, but be curious and compassionate when dealing with these people. If they are hostile towards you or negative, then you have the decision on if they're not honoring your boundary, whether or not you can continue the relationship. My advice to people and the partners for Dream Impact is to slow down. <laughs> Disconnect from tech, take some time to really be slow, be intentional about what you do with your time. So taking time to really reconnect with who you are, not what you do, not what you do for money, right? But who you are. So I often like to guide people through an exercise of what did you do in your childhood, right? Bringing them back to some childhood memories that are really vibrant. And how do we bring that back into our current life? Because energy is not just sleep and food. 
It's also creative energy. It's also social energy. So how are we making sure that all these different energy centers are nurtured and fulfilled? If you do not take care of your own energy, you will not be able to support others long term. You might be able to do it for six months, nine months, 12 months, maybe even 18, but you will hit a wall where you will be burnt out and you will have a health issue. It's inevitable because the stress levels, the cortisol, you're constantly in that fight or flight, you're not sleeping, you're having caffeine to wake up and then you're having something to put you to sleep at night. It's constantly jack up, jack down, jack up, jack down. And then you're going to start making mistakes at work. And then you're starting going to get frustrated and alienate people around you and damage relationships. But just making sure you carve out that time, just like self-care is not selfish, carving out time for your hobbies is not selfish either.